welcome to the FEMAP version 11.3 What's New video series. Meshing. Just a little bit of history. When we first wrote the quad mesher in FEMAP, engineers at that point, they wanted almost perfectly shaped quadrilaterals. And if you couldn't get that, they'll take a triangle. So the original mesher was really designed to mesh very perpendicular and create you know, almost square elements. And then when it had to, when it couldn't do that, give you a triangle. We have customers now that, I guess, I don't know if the analysis codes are changed or just they want to mesh. They want all quads no matter what. So we, we looked at a couple different ways of doing this, but what we were able to do is take the existing mesher, and uh, we wrote some code that actually a, a real high-speed data structure it knows the connections of the mesh, and I, we just run around and move the triangles around and connect them up and do stuff, and we can just basically take them out of the mesh. So here's the default mesh, and you could, if you don't turn on the max quads, this is what you still get. You turn on the max quads, it just you know, takes those triangles out. And since there's an odd number on the periphery here, you have to have at least one triangle. But then if you change that to one mesh size, you can get an all-quad mesh. So it, it just, uh, you know, if you want an all-quad mesh now, you can get one. So here's that exact same part. And I'll do mesh surface. I'm not going to let it just remesh and resize right now. But here's, here's the default mesh. And if I go under elements by shape, I can turn on the highlighter and see there's eight triangles in there. So there's, there's eight triangles in there. All you got to do is turn on max quads, pick it again, and now there's four triangles. Now. It, it still honors the, uh, the maximum aspect ratio. So as long as you tune that up a little bit, you can then go to no quads at all. Turn on highlighter. And if you change the mesh size, let's just see what it does here. Couple triangles. But again, those are along the same thing. If you allow it to get a little looser on what it'll take as a quad, you can get all quads. Now you can combine this with the layers and get a real nice layer around the edges and then an all quad mesh. And if you keep juice it up the layers. You can do some other fun things where you run the layering in a little bit more. But you can get just about any mesh you want. They're all quads if you want them now. The layers actually tells the mesher to pave one almost perfect layer around the edge. And I, I told it now 10, so it keeps trying to pave in. I think once it gets close to something, it stops. And then anything left over it gets the free mesh. Another thing we did, if you used our, our triangle mesher always had a great growth thing. So when you're tet meshing something, you could tell it, I want a tight mesh around any boundaries or periphery and then let the mesh grow out towards the middle where you know there's no stress concentrations anyway. Uh, the quad mesher didn't do that. The quad mesher was kind of constant across the mesh. It wouldn't grow in the middle. We've now turned on the grow in the middle for the quad. So you can now achieve kind of that same effect where you go ahead and tighten up a lot around stress concentrations and such but let the mesh grow further out and get your node, you know, degree of freedom countdown for the model. So I mean, that'll help get models smaller and better answers. We've also come up with a new smoothing algorithm. Uh, our old smoother you know, does a great job if, you're if your uh, geometry, your mesh isn't super curved, but where it was curved, sometimes the smoothing would cause it to relax and, and, and it's just kind of, it was like a relaxation thing, the smoothing, so it kind of Droop. We recoded that with a new, more 3D algorithm, so you now get a better smoothing of meshes on highly curved structures. So let's say you're, the, you know, you're given this mesh. There's no geometry, and for some reason, you know, you want to model some stress uh, concentration here, and maybe get some better stress data. It, it'll be a lot of work to kind of make this happen, and in, in, in just you know, regular manual meshing or whatever. So George wrote editing element refine and it's as easy as you just pick a couple elements and it, this is a preview it's not doing it yet and you can grow that selection and when you're done growing that you hit OK and you've got a refined mesh and I'll do it again I think I picked one down on the inside uh, it's got to add and remove too so if you, if you don't if you didn't like what you picked I can remove like that one and I can now grow it Now the real neat thing that you don't know is going on here, and I'll show you when I turn on the shrink, there was beam little stiffeners around this model. It's splitting every stiffener 
It's propagating pressure loads. It's propagating, like you had a laminate definition, the material angle for the split elements matches the one that was the original element. Constraints, if there was a constraint between the two nodes and, and they're same, it would put a new one in the middle node. So you can now pretty much refine meshes instantaneously. And there's still, I just want to make sure everyone's seen it, back in 11.2, we had another one that, that is also just handy. Uh, under that same place, there's a mesh editing edge split, and you can just pick two nodes, and it runs through the model, does the same thing. But it propagates it as far as it has to to keep everything connected. So you can pretty quickly refine a mesh with, with these tools. And this one, in version 11.3, we added a multi-pick to So if you were kind of doing that, multiple nodes. You can now pick multiple. It'll go through and do them at one time. And this does the same thing. Splits the beam, properties, pressures, constraints, anything. Just another quick example, T-junctions. Whatever's connected is going to stay connected. It gets it all done. So in the same model, similar to the, the, the uh, plane model there, you pick a region, grow it out wherever you want to. And there's also just a drag. You can just you know, wing the mouse around and highlight elements and refine. If there is geometry, if it's just a, an orphan mesh, it doesn't do any projecting or anything. But if it does have geometry, it, it will project and keep everything smooth. So you can quickly do some real nice mesh refinements. Another enhancement we did in this release, we've always had these mesh hard points in the surface. So this, this part originally, you know, it's a mid-surface thing, and it had some holes. We turned the holes in the points so that the mesh would get a node right where you need to constrain it. And if you meshed it, you got a node everywhere you had a point. We had an issue, it, then if you used our meshing toolbox to split this up and do other things to get a better mesh in certain areas, those hard points, sometimes you'd split a surface in half and the point that was pointing to the one surface is now pointing to a different surface. Now if you make any edits and stuff, the points automatically get reassociated to the new stuff and when you remesh, your hard points are still going to be there. It's just much better when you're using that, that tool. Another thing we've been working on in FEMAP, we added kind of virtual geometry or topology on top of solids, but a lot of times we get these parts in that have kind of extraneous points and stuff, and, and sometimes even extraneous little sliver surfaces and such, which well, when we go to mesh, you know, we, we take every little piece into account, we mesh those, sometimes you get little sliver elements. And we had tools in FEMAP where you could combine them together into a virtual surface and it would mesh on top of that and you get a much better mesh, so it gets rid of all the little gaps and slivers. But it really wasn't fixing the geometry. So we, for another customer, we now can actually take those points out permanently at a parasolid level and clean up the geometry and take out edges so you get a continuous new surface. And the nice thing here, I mean, it does the same end result at meshing, but at least now you get a nice single piece of consistent geometry. You could use it for other splits in FEMAP, or you could kick it out to another program if you needed to use it for something else. But if you're running a dirty geometry like this, it's just another tool in your toolbox to kind of clean that stuff up and make you know, really good meshes.